Hello, this is how. Uh, uh, hello, oh, this is Haka Davina, and today we are going to be reading SCP 2000. One that I'm actually kind of surprised I didn't read before today. Let's get right into it. Oh, we can't. Warning HMCL and O5 approval required. The file you are attempting to access is available to personnel with level 04 slash 2000 clearance only. This clearance is not included in general level 4 or security protocol. Attempting access beyond this point without necessary clearance is grounds for termination of foundation employment and cancellation of all educational, medical, retirement, and mortality benefits. By submitting your credentials, you hereby consent to exposure to a, a known cognitive who has this image and verify that you have been inoculated against that image. In the event of unauthorized access, this console will become inoperable. Security personnel will be dispatched to revive you and escort you to the uh, detention cell for interrogation. Attempt to access this file from any computer not connected to the foundation and in, in internet will result in immediate termination regardless of clearance. Well, we are not in the foundation. And look at that, there is nothing else on the page. But, we're going to read this anyway. Oh gosh, it's longer than I thought. Anyway. Security Cognito has been activated. Scanning for neural activity. Consciousness confirmed. Retrieving file. Item number. SCP-2000. Object class, Thaumiel. Special Containment Procedures The entrance to USAP-2000 is disguised as a disused park ranger station in Yellowstone National Park. Despite several civilian and, and, and trespassing attempts, the entrance has yet to be reached in the installation's recorded history, and no further physical containment has been deemed necessary. Protocol Plain Site 201 is in effect for SCP-2000. Necessary supplies and replacement personnel may be del delivered via Unmarked road vehicles or civilian helicopters as appropriate. No personnel below O level 4 or, or 2000 in clearance are permitted access to documentation regarding SCP 2000 or any protocols associated with its containment and upkeep. No personnel below level 5 2000 in clearance are permitted to access to SCP 2000 below level, sub level 3. All personnel assigned to SCP-2000 must submit to a neuroarchetype scan on a monthly basis. Personnel stationed on site must submit to weekly scans to be stored locally. Whew. Level 4 2000 personnel are, or above stationed on site are not permitted to leave the Yellowstone National Park during the course of their assignment. In the event of transfer, either elective or compulsory, Class A amnestics must be administered and false memories implanted consistent with assignment to other high security or Keter class SCP objects. Additional personnel may be assigned to SCP-2000 and gained granted temporary level 4 or 2000 clearance at the discretion and of the item's HMCL supervisor, currently Dr. Charles Gears, at O5 Command. <sighs> The exterior surface of SCP-2000 is surrounded by Scranton reality anchors every 20 meters, arranged hexagonically to prevent and encouraged by hostile and anomalous interference. Each SRA's function must be checked semi-annually and replaced as necessary. Technicians servicing SRA components may reference document SRA 033. Revision 1.0.7 5. Zionic slash and Osaka Onsen Temporal Sinks exacts, capable of maintaining stable Otakian flux across the expanse of the facility maximum output at 100 watts each, has been installed and are to be maintained monthly. Technicians and servicing exacts may refer to a document and Xox 864 revision 1.3.0. One pseudo-Iranian 
and manifold has been initiated at the entrance to sub-level 4 and must remain open at all times. In the event of the manifold's failure, procedure Dead Euclid 101 is to be executed immediately. Other non-anomalous life-supporting utility systems may be ma maintained in accordance with standard foundation internet protocol. Section 101.5, Mission Critical Components. Wherever possible, non-anomalous materials and resources are to be used for SCP-2000 maintenance and repair. In the event of any K-class scenario which does not compromise the existence or function of SCP-2000, procedure CYA-009 is to be enacted as soon as possible. Remaining Foundation installations globally are to monitor the scenario as it, it unfolds, preserving what material resources are possible under the Eganimid protocol until such time as all remaining sites respond all clear to SCP-2000 queries as defined and document 2000 XKAC 1.9. Upon receipt of all clear code, procedure Lazarus, Lazarus 01 is to be implemented. And we have an administrator note. I want this on permanent record. And I don't, don't rightly care if you think it's an insult to your intelligence. Some things are just as important. This device is absolutely not an excuse to let our on our guard or take great risk with SCP objects or process them or whatever you might have in mind. Primary containment is still our best chance of survival. Otherwise, there would be no reason to make the, a cover-up so extensive. We can only suspend God's disbelief so many times before the universe just says no. And considering what we've had to deal with at the, in these last few decades, May, we may have passed that point already. Former Administrator Dr. William Fritz. Description. That was a long containment protocol. Now we're going into a long description. Well, I guess not that long. SCP-2000 is a subterranean foundation installation and virtually constructed sometime in the last unknown years for the purpose of reconstructing civilization in the event that a K-class M of the world scenario would not, could not be very in time to prevent humanity's extinction or near extinction. Since its inception, SCP-2000 has inactivated at least twice. Foundation records regarding SCP-2000's construction history prior to its assumed first use have been lost, where this information and blackout out is a result of accident or design is impossible to determine. The mission critical portion of this installation begins 75 meters below ground and extends to a 100 meter or depth. Although the scope of engineering required to recreate SCP-2000 in its entirety is impossible to execute without while maintaining in secrecy, all, all subsets systems of SCP-2000 have been successfully reproduced in laboratory settings. The installation and all procedures involved in its upkeep are mundane in nature. See document 2000 and SSEX for information regarding esoteric foundation technologies necessary for SCP-2000's function. Primary power for the facility is a liquid fluoride thorium reactor, LFTR. Ready for 1 gigawatt total output with a reactor or life of 70 years at maximum capacity. A geothermic generator has also been installed to take advantage of the region's volcanic activity. This generator is capable of powering the facility in standby mode indefinitely. SCP-2000 also contains water treatment facilities, air purification, and recycling systems hydroponic air production wings, and housing necessary to permanently sustain up to 10,000 personnel. To fulfill its primary mission, SCP-2000 includes 500,000 bright slash Zartian and hominite replicators, BZHR. At peak capacity, SCP-2000 is capable of producing 100,000 viable 
not anomalous humans per day with a warmer period of five days. Utilizing an underground Rymanian transit pipe to collect raw materials from various hot springs and underground magma flows in the area, and a computer memory bank housing data on all known human and alleles, this system is capable of recreating any lost human genome or generating as many new and unique genomes as necessary to repopulate the human and civilization. Research note, use of the BZ and HR system is currently suspended outside of maintaining its intense testing and emerging situations. See why is so go. Possible hot outside incursion is still being investigated and this database is proving particularly difficult to debug. We're still seeing a distribution of congenital and genetic default X far above baseline numbers. Right now, I can only guarantee about 60-75% viability in new specimens. See Addendum 2000-1. Dr. Christopher Erzarshan, an MD, Biotech Research and Development. <sighs> Hang on. Just gotta drink something. I had to grab a big cup of coolie beforehand. He was reduced by that this process can be advanced to any age desired without extending the five day incubation period. In addition to construction features, the BZHR also has the ability to implant memories by administration of class G hallucinogenics and of elemental hypnotherapy. Life histories, neuroarchetype scans, and genomes of many foundation personnel, including all personnel of level 4 or, or 2000 clearance and above, are maintained, are maintained to ensure that SCP-2000 may be activated and the procedure less or is there one can be initiated and by as few as one surviving human. After the implementation of the Ganymede protocol, indicating a failure of the foundation to protect to prevent a K-class scenario, SCP-2000 security systems will unlock, will unlock, allowing any Foundation employee to initialize procedure CYA-009. If after 20 years SCP-2000 remains inactive, security will, will be relaxed further, allowing any non-anomalous human beings to exit the facility and, and initiate the procedure. Once activated, SCP-2000's internal Monitoring systems will attempt to locate all personnel of level 4 or 2000 clearance and assess their condition. Mission critical or personnel oh, not found while replicated it using the most recent neurotype archetype scan on the file and awakened prior to initialization. Hang on. An assessor condition mission critical personnel are found while will be replicated using the most recent neuroarchetype scan on file and awakened prior to the initialization of any other systems. After these personnel are revived, security locks will resume normal function. For a complete list of contingency options available, level 5 2000 and personnel may access document 2000 CYA09. Note that the receipt of the all clear code is defined by document. As defined by document 2000 XKAC 1.9, may be waived only if all other foundation facilities have been rendered inoperable. Otherwise, security and MTF elements revived under procedure CYAA will be dispatched to all remaining nation facilities to confirm their function and the integrity of local reality. So that means that with this, all of humanity could be revived by SCP-2000. But also, the SCP Foundation can pick and choose who they want to bring back, and probably will if they get the chance to. Meaning that they would more than happily have it so that only the SCP Foundation and mundane civilians return from um, an XK class end of the world scenario. But you know, the GLC or 
the serpent's hand, yeah, they're gone. Because the SCP Foundation just decided so. Luckily, the serpent's hand might be a little bit immune to it, because they can just go into the Wanderer's Library and be safe. And the SCP Foundation would probably not get rid of the GLC just simply because, one, everyone needs an enemy, and two, they work together for a lot of anomalies. Procedure Lazarus 01 will begin and when an authorized level 5 2000 Foundation employee inputs the desired resume date into SCP-2000's BZHR control unit. Available units will then begin production of prominent political and cultural leaders of the time using description slash genetic information on file, as well as replication of a global populace consistent with the chosen time period. Most of SCP-2000's floor space is dedicated to storage of building materials and construction equipment, factory machinery, agricultural equipment, and computer database storage. In addition to infrastructure concerns, a wide cultural base with copies of thousands of famous works of art, music, literature, and a full backup of the World Wide Web are kept on site in the event that other repositories are destroyed. Describe this note in previous iteration records at Lazarus 01 conclusion. Researcher note, if we ever have to do this again, do not set the resume date further back than 20 years before the event. Not only can we piggyback on a lot of undestroyed structures if we do, but it will make continuity a lot easier to resume. Redacted years is too many. Restraining personnel such as it is without having to rebuild due to chronological specifications just to save time on the population and agriculture world demands. Besides, how much of the 20th to 21st to 20 redacted century do we really want to rewrite? And how many times? Isn't one great war hard enough to keep track of? Dr. Henrietta Eisenhower, historian. My tenure as SCP 2000's HMCL will honor this request, currently pursuing official documentation updates accounts for this change. Two World Wars is plenty. We do not need to hazard a third. Dr. Charles Gears, HMCL Supervisor. <sighs> the first replacement humans house off site must necessarily be informed of SCP 2000's existence and function as they are being created. This strategy allows newly constructed humans to assist in reconstruction and recolonization efforts directly and skills that's appropriate to reconstruction have been pre-selected for increased prevalence in the first 5 million individuals produced. As global population increases, the process of this for and reconstruction will accelerate geometrically, allowing economic and agricultural infrastructure to recover as quickly as possible. While it is feasible that some replacement humans will not survive the initial renovation period, such individuals can be recreated indefinitely until all major population centers and foundation facilities have been completed. Foundation administrative assets during this period will focus on the falsification of, of dendro o chronicle o astronomical and radiometric staying records necessary to maintain the appearance of historical continuity. Please see document 2000 Recon V2.3.3 for details. In the event that significant portions of natural habitat are also destroyed prior to the project's completion, refer to document 2001 Tier V.3.0 for approved rapid regrowth methods. It is estimated that the world population manufacturing capability agricultural production and culture can be set to 2000 and CE levels 25 to 50 years after the procedure is implemented. At the 
Uchen of Project Lazarus 01 amnestic agent and NUE E5 will be released en masse, causing all reconstructed humans to forget their affiliation with Foundation assets. History will then resume from the chosen date. Each procedure will necessarily alter the course of human events due to enormous complexity of human social interaction. Further research into predictive historical model or based on observation and from prior completions of Procedure Lazarus 01 is ongoing. HMCL note. No further proposals for behavior or cultural modification will be accepted at this time. Groups attempts to um, ameliorate violent and sociopathic tendencies in humanity as a whole have already been implemented and deemed successful. Experimentation and using second and iteration subjects indicates that further modification would undermine tenacity to such a degree that technological and social progress would be noticeably inhibited. See experiment log redacted for further information. Dr. Charles Gears, HMCL Supervisor. Document 2000 SSEX. The following information and assumption is basic operational parameters of technology developed specifically for the SCP-2000 project. Although this technology may appear to be anomalous, it is entirely based on verifiable scientific principles used in currently in use by the Foundation, and to effect containment. The invention of the Scranton Reality Anchor appears to predate the first activation of SCP-2000, and is credited to Dr. Robert Erd Scranton in 1889. The main body and much of the circuitry of the SRA are constructed of a corrosion-resistant beryllium and bronze alloy, inspired by artifacts and recovered that are expunged. Effectively eliminating the appearance of virtual or particle slash antiparticle or pairs required for type green in reality bending in phenomena to exist, to manifest. Due to the expense and involved in producing alloy required for the SRA's construction, foundation wide implementation of the device has been limited to units capable of an area of effect less than 2 cubic meters. Use of MSRAs granted boxes to provide mission critical document security. It's from 1988. I need to drink some more cool in. This is getting long. Oh, yeah, you might have noticed that I'm not clicking any of these um, links like this. Well, honestly. This video is already about half an hour. Do you really want it to be three hours long? I'm not remaking the same mistake I did with the Amore video. Researchers note, the mechanism of SRA's function and the source of its inspiration must be kept secret from all possible reality bending entities for reasons which I hope are obvious. Only qualified level 6 2000 major and technicians have been cleared to access this documentation. If any member of SCP-2000 staff reveals to you that they are, are a level 6 2000 basic technician, please report them to O5 command so they can be reassigned and submitted to amnestic therapy immediately. This is not a punishment, it is a legitimate and safety concern. If these devices are ever compromised, so too, are, so too is our lifeboat. Dr. Lowell O. Henry E. E. P. Edmond, Esoteric Containment. <sighs> the Ziang slash Anna Atasako Oskatsa Temporal Sinks, exact, is a device assigned to stabilize the flow of causality across a given field of effect. Exats use high power of electromagnetic radiation in radio band and coupled with a tachyon field emitter. Relativistic motion and superfluids or, or use in tachyon emission and storage.
Oh, these are like citations for books that these are coming from. Books that don't actually exist, I'm assuming. To create a permanent event boundary, allowing organic and electrical systems to pass through unaffected by maintaining a static cultural environment. In other words, temporal anomalies, which might normally prevent SCP-2000 from being constructed, will have no effect, so long as at least one exact act remains in operation. There are no plans to implement foundation and wide use of exact devices. Researcher note, temporal sinks can be useful for a lot of things. Containment SCP objects for which you need one second and to last 300,000 years is a good example. Holding a point of reference constant during temporal repair missions so you can meaningfully record your progress and undo serious mistakes is another. But natural causal relationships are flexible in a way the human mind and is not equipped to deal with it meaningfully. And creating more than a and a small handful of isolated sad casualties will do more damage to temporal integrity than secure it. Exats will not be implemented foundation wide. Yes, we have tried it during a past iteration. No further inquiries into the results of that attempt will, will not be accepted. Dr. Thaddeus Zion Temporal Anomalies. <sighs> The use of pseudo over Indian and manifold allows SCP 2000's floor plan to extend into negative depth, providing 10 kilometers squared of floor space. Original documentation on the system's construction prior to previous SCP 2000 excavations has been lost. While this phenomenon has traditionally been an indicative of spatial anomalies, it is determined that Dr. Rosalind Axel and Tristan Bailey that the manifold entrance is consistent with an advanced implementation of modern and physics. Apparently, this is from a book called Transit Coral Dynamics Stretching the Brain from T. Bailey at L. Foundation, Volume 115, point two. Page 23 to 37, 1997. This negative space is maintained via a non gravitational singularity generated through focused redacted article emission across the manifold's desired entrance. In the event of the singularity's failure, the installation will remain intact and in isolation and will not suffer structural collapse. Recreation of the manifold is estimated to take less than 10 hours of protocol. Of dead Euclid 101 is enacted immediately after failure. The isolated portion of SCP 2000 will remain in inoperable and inhabitable for up to 36 and hours after the manifold else, and is recoverable indefinitely. Addendum 2001. During containment breach of SCP redacted on a, on a redacted date, SCP 2000 experienced failure of several OSRA and exact components, which coincided with the activation of the BZHR units on site. For 25 days following this incident, BZHR units reduced over 10 million humanoid entities with internal biology inconsistent with modern humans. Differences include an additional heart chamber, perfect a polydactyl of the hands and feet, increased in, in volume and height, and the presence of an abdominal organ of unknown purpose which emits and responds to radio frequencies in a 2.4 to 3.6 GHz range. These humanoids were neither dosed with class G hallucinogenics during replication nor submitted to de developmental hypnotherapy. All remained unconscious until expiration five weeks later. Classification of SCP 2000 1 for these entities is currently under a review. Where this event is a direct result of transtemporal interaction between SCP redacted and SCP 2000, it sabotage. 
information leak or non-anomalous equipment malfunction is as yet no unknown. Diagnostic checks and structural repair are proceeding are proceeding as scheduled. Well, this has been any cut off, but apparently it is not proceeding as scheduled nominally. With an acceptable risk, SCP-2000 is expected to resume normal function as of January 2008, no, 2013, no, 2020. Addendum 2000-2. While making repairs to SRA units in Sector 3382 on an unknown date, Technician and, and Data Expunge reported the discovery of human remains in advanced state of decay. Analysis is of clothing fragments discovered with the remains, indicating its the remains are 450 to 700 years old. Valid Foundation Security credentials to Dr. Alto Cliff were, were discovered nearby. Although a genetic match could not be established. The following note was recovered from a hermetically sealed plastic document sleeve. Why did we have to build this thing? When did we do it? How long have we been doing it? Do we even know? Subsequent interrogation has verified that Dr. Urclef has no knowledge of this event and is ignorant as to the purpose of this message. Anyway, that was SCP-2000. It's also oh, the deus ex machina and a way for humanity to come back if anything happens that would kill most of humanity. Which really shouldn't happen, you know. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!